Hello, this is Ahsoka Selvaraja of Mystic Visions with another video for you and today it's all about karma. So, what is karma? Well, quite simply, it's nothing more than the law of cause and effect which is to say that for every effect there is a cause. That's literally what karma is. It's a scientific law of nature. Now many people have misunderstandings about karma and think that um, there's something very fatalistic about it. There's actually nothing fatalistic about it. It's not a case of, you know, I can't help it, it's my karma. Rather, we're just talking in a responsible fashion about a basic law of the universe. In fact, everything we think, say or do creates karma. It contributes to our debt of karma, if you like, for good or for ill. And we can't actually help but create karma all the while. Which means that you are a cause in motion. And as you know, every cause creates an effect. There are no effects without corresponding causes. And that's true in all areas of life, on the individual human level as well as on the geopolitical international level. You know, if you see some kind of great disaster or calamity take place to a country, politicians will try to make out, particularly let's say 9-11 as a great example, politicians will try to make out that that was an effect without a cause or the cause was evil people. But in fact every cause has an effect and you only have to look to find a cause. And that's uh, true of everything, not just the contentious example I just mentioned, but um, in all areas every effect has a cause and that's all that karma is saying. And if karma actually manifested easily it would be very easy to understand and deal with. However it usually does not and according to esoteric traditions we are subject to endless rebirths reincarnation and have lived countless lifetimes we have had literally infinite lives now that may be hard to swallow for some people but that's basically what we're saying if we say that we are living in a world a universe that has meaning if our lives have meaning and if the things that happen to us have meaning then there has to be an explanation there has to be some cause Otherwise, there is no meaning for why we suffer or why we are born fortunate or unfortunate or crippled or well or whatever. In uh, happy circumstances and so sad circumstances, there's no meaning to it. So at some level, we had to have been responsible. That's basically what karma is implying. And if it really was easy, it would be easy to understand and easy to deal with. Like if we put out a cause and we instantly felt the effect then we would soon understand the cause-effect relationship. But the problem is that we don't always get the effect back for the cause we put out. It can be delayed. It can come back in another form. It could even come back in another life, which is what it does for the very large part. We don't manifest all the karma that we express and create in this life within this life. It doesn't come back to us within this life. And this is what makes things complicated. Hence, we can view our present life now as a direct result of various causes we have set in motion in previous lives and in, indeed in our present life as well. Likewise, future lives that we experience are a direct consequence of our present thoughts, words and deeds as well as accumulated unexpressed karmic potentials yet to manifest because they don't all manifest within one lifetime. Whatever you've, you have accumulated in this lifetime or in previous lifetimes doesn't manifest within the single lifetime. It's like seeds. Seeds take time to grow. Some will sprout now, some will sprout later according to what kind of plant it is and according to when it was planted. So karma is the same way. We're putting out causes now that we may not experience in time to, until a future lifetime. So if you look at somebody who is uh, seemingly very fortunate and talented and successful or whatever and you look at somebody else and they're not, there can be karmic causes for that for certain. And in fact even Christianity hints at this with its notion of the judgment. You know that we're all going to be judged on the last day. However, according to esoteric tradition, the judge is karma. Our own karma is our own judge a precise law of cause and effect and it will deliver to us precisely what we have put into it 
as you sow, so shall you reap, as it says in the Bible. And consequently, you're led to the question, what can you do about it? Well, first of all, be aware from now on that every cause you put out into the universe, even your very thoughts, every cause creates an effect. And yes, the law of attraction, the famous law of attraction, is, shall we say, a reduced version of the law of karma. Reduced because, for the most part, it's set up so that it actually does manifest within our own lifetime. That's how people work with the law of attraction. But it basically is a form of the law of karma. You can understand that literally everything you experience, for good or ill, results ultimately from karmic causes. This even applies to your thoughts, opinions, judgments about everything. If you had no karma, if you had a perfected consciousness like the Buddha, you would literally have no filters or obstructions in your thought processes, in your mind whatsoever. You would have a perfect, purified mind, and hence every thought, every thing that entered your mind would be automatically 100% correct and accurate. And consequently, to the extent that you make mistakes, have obstructions, problems, difficulties with your mental processes, or indeed in your life, and your reactions to what goes on in your life, to the extent that you experience those things, you have karmic filters and obstructions and issues. So understand that. Literally everything you experience for good or ill comes from karma. And hence you have to learn to accept responsibility for literally everything in your life, even things you think are beyond your control because at some spiritual level you created them. And that may not seem evident, especially when we're talking about misfortunes or difficulties, but at some spiritual level you needed to experience those very things. And so they were a manifestation of your karma. It's a wheel of karma. We're basically caught in a wheel of karma. And we are responsible for the things we experience in this lifetime and in future lifetimes. And just learning and responsibility and understanding the law of karma helps you to respect it and to work with it as a law of cause and effect and to actually minimize negative karma in your life. However, that's not enough. Ultimately, you have to seek out methods for karmic cleansing, which unfortunately are beyond the limits of this brief video. But suffice it to say that within the Western traditions there have emerged some karmic cleansing um, uh, systems and certainly within the Eastern traditions, best known would be the Tibetan Buddhist traditions, uh, there are karmic cleansing methods to cleanse previous karma because we have almost infinite levels of karma from infinite lifetimes and they will manifest and keep us on this endless circle. So do seek out methods for karmic cleansing if you can. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's been useful. This is Ahsoka Salvaraja of Mystic Visions, and we will talk again soon.